Howdy folks, welcome back to another grilling video. And today we're gonna to do a video on how to control the smoke on your Pit Boss smoker, specifically if it's a pellet smoker. We've had this in the comments a couple of different times. The latest suggestion was from Krivitz guys, so thank y'all so much for the suggestions. I'm gonna talk about how to control smoke. Now, this particular model is a combo pellet smoker gas grill, and it has a damper right here in the center between the two sides that allow you to take smoke from the smoke chamber and allow it to go into the gas grill side, and you have an, an adjustable chimney on this side. We'll go over this in a little bit more detail, as well as a little trick I have here for the back side of the pellet smoker where there are some holes, some vents. Hopefully this will be really helpful. Let me go ahead and get this set up and I'll explain how we're gonna go ahead and do our testing because we're gonna be using temperature tests on each side as well. We're not actually gonna cook something today, we're just gonna show how to control that smoke. As I mentioned before, this grill has a damper between these two sides. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the camera down here and show you what that looks like. It's actually just pulling a grate open and closed in here that allows that smoke to pass through. You see that opening up right there? I don't know how well you can even see that. Now if we look along the back side of the grill here and we go right on the back side of the smoke section, you see these holes there, right? Those also let heat and smoke out. And there is no damper on that to close it, so I'll show you a little trick we use there. And then as I mentioned, if we come back out, you can see this chimney here as well. And this is what I was mentioning. You can adjust this up or down by spinning it. You can see it's going up or down, but it does not seal all the way. So does not do a lot of uh, good for smoke control. Where I do find the usefulness in this over here, however, is if I want to do something with a lower temperature smoke, or I have something over here that I'm trying to smoke. For example, we've done smoke salt before, and there are times when I will open the damper, be doing a brisket on that side, open this up a little bit so that the smoke ends up coming through here, and I block those vents in the back. I'll show you that in a minute. That way I'm getting smoke in both chambers. I leave this off because I'm not worried about the temperature getting high, and I can put a couple of trays of salt in there. And if I'm doing an eight hour cook, I just let it go ahead and smoke over there. By opening this, it does allow some airflow, and it gets that smoke to draw out through that uh, damper between the two sections and up and out of this side. For our test today, what we're gonna do is we're only gonna be running heat on the pellet side probably just in the smoke setting, just to keep it at a lower temperature for the work we're gonna do. Now I went ahead um, and I have just a probe sitting up here on top of the grate, and that's in my left probe. My number two probe I have sitting on the grate on this right-hand side. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna monitor the temperature before we even turn it on, so we can see just how much this temperature increases versus this with our damper open, allowing that smoke to go through. Um, let's go ahead and get this fired up. I'm just gonna put it on its smoke setting for now. And as this warms up, I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do now to ensure that the smoke goes from this chamber to that, besides just opening up our damper. That's certainly one of the things we're gonna do. But I'm gonna show you this trick with these vents in the back as well. So here's a great little trick for controlling smoke when we're running both chambers. On the back side of the smoke chamber, there's five, oh, they're probably three quarter inch to one inch holes. And what we wanna do is we wanna control how much of that smoke we let in or out of here. Let me show you something that's to the rescue here. If you go to your local sign shop, right, where they make signs, like think about those magnetic signs you see on the side of somebody's car advertising their handyman business or their lawn mowing business. You can buy a sheet of this stuff. You know, it's, uh, I don't know, 12 inches by 24 or whatever size they are. And it's cheap. I think I paid like 11 bucks for this little roll of this stuff um, at a local sign shop. And I just have it stuck on the side of my toolbox. And about every six months or so, I cut another strip. I like to do them at about an inch and a half to two inches long. And this is really handy. You can already start to see the smoke coming out of here. There's already smoke starting to come out of here. And what we can do is we can just take this magnetic strip and we're just gonna cover those holes right up. And I like to do them with two pieces. That way, if I want, I can slide this one open or closed and control just how much smoke goes in there. Now I'm gonna close these off completely. Now with this smoke chamber open, we are now starting to see the smoke come out over here. You're seeing a little bit here too, because this is just firing up. But what we're now doing is we're taking the smoke from the pellet side, filling up that pellet smoker, filling that with smoke coming through that opening, and it's working its way up through this chimney here. That is how you go ahead and cold smoke over here. Now, let's go ahead and check the temperatures in both of these right now. I will say I really do love this grill, but this control panel, um, after two years, let's see, it's been two years and a few months we've had this, 
uh, it's difficult to see the screen. It's probably because it's gotten hazy from being outside and it's always covered, but it's tough to read it. So I had to shade it and kind of get really close. So what we're looking at is 165 degrees on the smoke side, which is about full smoke temperature. It's usually between 170 and 180, so it's working its way there. We're at 125 on this side. We'll check it in a little while. I'm just gonna let this go for, I don't know, another 15, 20 minutes. We'll check the temperature on either side and we'll talk about the differential in temperature there. My normal mode of operation, if I want some of this smoke to work its way to the other chamber, is I close off four to four and a quarter of the five holes. That's my normal setting. I have them all closed right here now to get maximum smoke traveling across this, but you could change that a little bit as well. Now I will say, remind you of something, if you go to take these off, remember, it's magnetic, it's metal, it conducts heat, they are hot. <laughs> so don't, uh, don't do something silly and forget that. Now this one happens to be the Pit Boss Pro Series Combo Unit. Um, it's similar to a Sportsman, it's almost the same one I believe. I think this would apply to any Pit Boss um, pellet smoker you have. The difference is going to be what I just said around you know four to four and a half um, holes being covered up. That may vary for you and honestly it's just going to be some trial and error and what you like. What you like in taste, what you like in smokiness, and how you're going to control the temperature. If we're going to let that sit in there for a little while, let's throw a line in. I went ahead and turned this up to 200 about 15 minutes ago. So I'm now at 195 on this side, and that side's gotten up to 148. So you can see it's, you know, it's about a 50 degree temperature difference. Um, what I'll do is I'll crank it up to about 300 on this side just to see if it still ends up being about 50 degrees difference over there. Nothing. There we go. Tell. Thank you. Holy shit. <laughs> See that bird? No. All right, with this side set at 350, it's now at 354 degrees over here. And on this side, the probe is reading 164. The um, upper side, this is reading just at about 195. So that gives you an idea where it is. I hope you found this video useful. A little bit about controlling smoke on a pellet smoker, how you can use all little magnetic sign strips to go ahead and block uh, some of the vent holes on the pellet side, open the chamber between them, and allow it to flow out the chimney on this side, giving you extra smoke on the gas side of the grill. Bye y'all, safe and happy grilling. We'll see you next week. One of these weeks coming up, I'm probably gonna be putting a new controller in that. I was having a real tough time. I was turning my hat around backwards, down on my knees, cut my hands over it. I can barely see the, uh, the display on this thing anymore. So I would say after two years, that's a bit of a fail. It's really tough to see. It's always been a little bit challenging in the direct sun. Man, I'm cupping my hands and making it completely dark and I'm really struggling to see it. Tonight after it gets dark, I'll see if it's any better or if it's really gone out. But right now it's looking like it's really, really tough to see almost to the point where you just can't read it. So I'll probably get a new controller for this thing. And if I do, I'll upgrade it, get the Wi-Fi Bluetooth one. Um, I think it also is a slightly different logic board in how it controls the auger. So, so more on that to come soon enough. Bye y'all, have a great day. But this would apply with almost every pit boss, though you might have to alternate these instructions a little bit depending on which model you have. What's interesting, however, is Right, I'll turn this around and show you, but we have the chimney in the back, and honestly on this one, that is almost for looks. It's to keep water from going down in it. Um, if I were to stick my finger up in there, there's a big gap, so you're not actually closing that off. Or you see somebody that no longer needs that, you know, we mow lawn sticker on the side of their car. <laughs> I'm joking, actually, I'm not gonna say that shit. <laughs>